So, um, we are going to learn a new thing today, but we're going to start off reviewing something, okay? So, do you remember when we learned about bonds? Yeah. We learned about bonds, right? And how, how can you figure out what kind of bonds two atoms are going to form. What do you have to do? Set. See if it's uh, metal or not. Right? You look if it's metal or non-metal. And then when I give you the electronegativities, what do you have to do? Sometimes. Subtract. Okay? So I'm going to give this to San Juan, and she's going to be my electronegativity chick. So let's take a look at this. I don't even have to do math with this one, do I? Because I have two atoms of the same kind. And I know that's going to be a non-polar polar covalent bond, right? They're going to share electrons. Now, in real life, those electrons are not going to be little orange things and little yellow things that stand still like soldiers, right? The electrons are buzzing around in those orbitals. Mm -hmm. And that's what that gray cloud is supposed to represent, all right? So do you see how the electrons are evenly distributed between the two atoms? So we say the bond is nonpolar. You remember all this, right? Okay, tell me what's going on in this one. Um, so do we have sharing of electrons? Uh, no, we do not, do we? We have a situation where this guy must be very much more what than this guy? Electro negative. Chlorine is very electronegative, sodium is not. And so it's going to steal an electron and become a negative anion. Sodium becomes positive, and now we have a bond. That's an ionic bond. We all know that, right? Let's take a look at this guy. Okay, I'm going to have San Juana subtract the electronegativities for me. What is the electronegativity of chlorine minus the electronegativity of hydrogen? And tell me what that is. So this is my electronegativity delta. 0.96. What does that mean? Not very that means what? Polar covalent. Polar covalent. So what that means is, is that they are sharing electrons, but they are not sharing them equally in the bond, are they? The electrons are being pulled more toward the chlorine side of the bond than it is the hydrogen side. And so we say the bond is polar. Are you with me? And we use this little fancy sigma sign to show that the, the chlorine side of that bond is a little bit more negative, and the hydrogen side is a little bit more positive because the electron is being pulled. Those are polar and nonpolar bonds, but guess what? Molecules can be polar or nonpolar. Okay? Molecules can be polar or nonpolar. So forget about the bonds. The bonds, you have to find out if they're uh, polar or nonpolar by subtracting the electronegativities, what, which is what San Juana just did for me. But to figure out if the whole molecule is polar or nonpolar, I have to tell you a story about my cake making. How many of you have ever made a cake and iced it? Okay. So I will tell you that I have trouble making my cakes look pretty. I, I'm a pretty good cook. But when I make a cake, all my icing gets glumped onto one side. You know what I'm saying, those of you that have iced a cake before? So like, you know how when you cut a piece of cake that's fancy from a bakery and you look at the icing, it's all even on the round of cake? My cakes usually have icing clumped on one side and then another side of the cake might not have as much icing. Are you with me? So that's kind of like what polar and nonpolar molecules are with electrons. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about and what this has to do with icing. Let's look at the molecule water. All right, here is what the Lewis dot diagram looks like, right? Here is oxygen bonded to two hydrogens, and there's two bonds there, and those bonds are polar molecules, or excuse me, they're polar bonds, but it's got two lone pairs. Well, those lone pairs of electrons are negative, aren't they? So do you see how this end of the molecule is very negative? 
Do you see why it's negative? Because it has these two lone pairs of electrons that are sitting there. And so this is kind of like my cake. The icing, the electron icing is heavier on that side of the cake than it is on this side of the cake. Do you see that? It's not evenly distributed. So we could make that little fancy sigma sign and say this end is really negative and this end is positive. Okay? So let's look at two more examples here. Here I have hydrogen. What kind of what kind of bond would that be? That would be nonpolar. I don't have to do the math because, hello, it has the same electronegativities. But look at the molecule. Now here, the electron cloud is bright green, right? That's where those electrons are buzzing around. Is the electron cloud evenly distributed over the molecule? Yes. So the molecule is nonpolar. Let's look right here. I need you to subtract for me. What is the electronegativity? What is the electronegativity of fluorine minus hydrogen? 1.78. Now, that's kind of right on the border, and hydrogen's a little bit weird. So I would say that this is a very, very polar molecule. Very, very polar molecule. Probably bordering on a little bit of ionic character. But look at the molecule HF. Is the icing evenly distributed? No. Let's look at this. Look at all those lone pairs right there. Do you see all those lone pairs? That means that the electrons are hanging out way heavy on this side of the molecule than on the other side. So that means the molecule is polar. All right? Let's take a look at another example. Carbon tetrafluoride. How would I write that formula? C. F4, okay? How many bonds are there? Four bonds, right? Four bonds, four bonds, and I'm gonna have uh, San Juana subtract for me to tell me if those bonds are polar or nonpolar. Mm -hmm. One point four three, what does that mean, folks? If the electronegativity delta is one point four, what does that mean? That means the bonds are polar. Okay? So that bond is polar, that bond is polar, that bond is polar, that bond is polar. But what about the molecule? Now you might say, Well, whoa, wait a minute, Mrs. Foy, look at those, look at those lone pairs, man. We got lone pairs out the wazoo. But is the electron icing evenly distributed? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so this molecule is nonpolar. Do you see that? So you might be thinking, wait a minute. Can the bonds be polar and the molecule be nonpolar? Yes. It depends on the symmetry and the molecular shape whether or not the molecule is polar or nonpolar, okay? That's good, you can stop right here, thanks.